one in four deaths in children under the age of five years are estimated to be due to diarrhea. And the main cause of death in diarrhea is dehydration. All watery diarrhea require fluid and electrolyte replacements. And these can be best provided by oral rehydration therapy, also known as ORT, or a solution and continued feeding. In fact, field trials have shown that children who are treated with ORS have actually gained weight. And research in many countries have also shown that ORS is safe as well as effective. Let us now see a film which will show us how to prepare ORS and what are the principles which must be kept in mind while administering ORS. Start by putting one liter of clean drinking water into a large clean container. To measure a liter at home, use four POW measures or two half liter milk bottles or simply an equivalent of five normal drinking glasses. The correct glass size is the one we show in this picture. Use the cleanest drinking water available to you. Let us now take five glasses to measure out one liter of water. Now empty out the contents of the packet into the water. Make sure that you do not leave any ORS in the packet. Stir the solution with a clean spoon until the powder is completely dissolved. Remember, the best way to give the fluid is slowly and with a spoon, with the child sitting or propped up. This child is being given too much ORS, too rapidly. Worse still, she is drinking it while lying flat on her back. Give one glassful sip by sip to the child after every loose motion. Give a sip at a time, preferably with a spoon. If the child is thirsty, give her more of the drink. Keep the rest of the ORS in a clean, covered container. Many manufacturers put in much more glucose to make the solution more sweet. This can make the diarrhea worse. Try to use a packet with the WHO formula. You saw in the film the preparation and administration of ORS. ORS is safe and effective for all age groups. While advising the mothers on ORS, certain instructions must be delivered to them. Uh, Dr. Patwari, will you elaborate on this? ORS is the most effective and the most safe solution to do this job. And this is effective in all kinds of diarrhea in all age groups and can be used for treatment of dehydration as well as for prevention of dehydration. Therefore, it's very important to know how to prepare ORS as has been shown in the film. One of the most common questions which we encounter from uh, mothers is, which type of water should be used? Many people have this wrong notion that you should use boiled water. So the answer is that you just use whatever uh, safe drinking water you are using for your day-to-day -day use, please use that water for preparation of ORS. You don't have to boil the water. Because by boiling, what happens, you have to boil it, then cool it. it you, with that, you waste a lot of time. And the basic point is that you don't have to do it, in fact. Any safe drinking water is good enough for preparation of ORS. The other important thing which we have to tell the mother is the measurement of one liter of water. For that, it's very important to know what kind of utensils the mother has at home. And by your own judgment, you have to make sure whether it contains 100 ml, 200 ml, or 250 ml. And accordingly, if you think she has a glass at home which measures about 200 ml of water, you ask her to measure water up to brim about five glasses that will make one liter. If you think the glass is a little larger, has about 250 ml, you suggest four glasses. So it's very important and this measurement has to be very accurate and uh, you must make sure that the mother understands how much water is to be uh, measured. Then the packet for the, uh, the packet of ORS has to be opened as has been shown in the film and all the contents have to be emptied in the, in the water and stirred properly. Instead of making the whole packet, you just take two, three spoons and add in a glass of water. So 
So, uh, is it recommended? Uh, should that be done? It's not recommended because by that we cannot, as uh, we will discuss later about the composition, it is an effective uh, solution with a definite amount of electrolytes and glucose in it, and it has to be given very appropriately. By doing that practice, you know, what you are doing is you are giving it very inappropriately, and you are not sure what you are giving. Therefore, it is always recommended that for one liter pack that should be used for one liter of water just together. You do not have to use it uh, in glasses or you know, in spoons. There are, for some people, you may have preparations which are meant only for a glass of water. One can use that, but one liter pack should be used for one liter of water. The other important thing is that normally we should consume this ORS which has been prepared over a period of 12 hours. Exactly. ORS must be consumed within 12 hours. Uh, Dr. Patwari, what happens if the child vomits frequently? See, there are three aspects which are related to vomiting. One is that diarrhea, particularly rotavirus diarrhea, usually presents with vomiting and diarrhea. So, vomiting is a part of the illness. But with that, what we need to understand is the amount of uh, vomiting which uh, the mothers complain, the amount of loss of uh, water and electrolytes which he vomits out is always less than what has been given to him. So there is always, it has been seen by, by research all over the world that the net amount of absorption is higher than what you actually see the child is vomiting. So one does not have to get worried that he is vomiting everything, he is still absorbing something, that is one thing. The other thing is that many children drink ORS very quickly, which results in distension of abdomen and they may just vomit it out. So giving ORS slowly in such children is definitely going to help and the vomiting will not be a problem. The third problem is uh, of uh, metabolic acidosis, which is a common feature of diarrhea. And because of acidosis, some children have a tendency to, to vomit whatever is given, including ORS. In such children, the best way is to give ORS slowly, about a spoon of ORS over one to two minutes for some time till the acceptance is better. And with practical experience, we have seen it in, uh, in most of the places where uh, we get regular contact with the, the pediatricians. There is no uh, difference in anybody's experience that children respond very well. They tolerate ORS very well if it is given slowly over a period of time. But if you have a child who has persistent vomiting, vomits very profusely, vomits more than four times an hour, those cases perhaps would qualify to be given intravenous fluids. ORS is a balanced mixture of glucose and electrolytes. It prevents and treats dehydration, corrects base deficit and potassium deficit. The glucose in the ORS helps to transport the sodium and water across the intestinal membrane during diarrhea. One has to see that the ORS is a balanced mixture. What are the constituents of ORS? Uh, Dr. Harish, would you like to elaborate on this? We should always describe the WHO recommended ORS, sodium 90 milli equivalents, titrate 10 milli equivalents, glucose 111 milli moles and potassium chloride 20 milli moles per liter. Boiling is not the answer because not only that it is tedious but why boiling is advised. If you see boiling is mainly advised by people or practitioners in good faith that you are trying to remove away the infection. Two, you are trying to make that water sterile. But the problem is what the child is drinking. Child is not only drinking ORS, he is also having his normal daily fluid intake which may be common water. And unless one advises a, for boiling of the common water which is absolutely impractical. Moreover, in a country like ours, the temperature majority of the time is very high and diarrhea, you will all agree, is a disease mainly of the summer. If I start boiling my water and keep cool it and then dissolve it in ORS and give it to the child, how long will it take? By that time, if the child didn't have any dehydration, now we will end up with dehydration. So it's for these reasons, it's not only that we want to save money, it's basically because it is totally impracticable. The constituents of ORS have been so variable that government of India has decided to put a logo and the instructions that this is to be dissolved in five glasses or exact one liter, whatever measurement the mother has. Try and standardize that container. Can you tell us uh, what must be done if a child continues to vomit in spite of giving ORS? Vomiting is generally over exaggerated by the mother. If a mother has come to you with complaints of vomiting, try and administer ORS. 
If the child still vomits, tell them to wait for 10 minutes and give it slowly. If the child, majority of the time, you'll see that they can now digest it. If I see at zero hour, when the children come to me initially, majority of them will be vomiting. And if I go and assess them after one hour, tactically, half of them, the vomiting would have disappeared. By four hours time, almost all children's vomiting has gone. What's the cause of vomiting? My friend has already clarified that it's, it's electrolyte imbalance and metabolic acidosis. So the answer to that is not antiemetic. Antiemetic doesn't control the cause of vomiting in children with diarrhea. ORF constituents, they have everything, which may include salts, which may correct the electrolyte imbalance. It has base to correct the acidosis part, and the vomiting goes away with it. But there may be few situations, like Raiko mentioned earlier, that if the child keeps on having persistent vomiting, and when do you say persistent vomiting? Four or more in an hour's time, in spite of your advice, to wait for 10 minutes and administer it more slowly. A simple guideline is that when you tell to the patient that drip goes drip by drip slowly, same advice you can give orally, that administer spoon by spoon and not more than one spoon every one to two minutes. If that is done, then the child vomits. So if the child vomits in spite of your advice or more importantly, the hydration is going downhill. If it is no dehydration and child has come to with dehydration or if new signs of dehydration appear, that's the moment not to administer antibiotic, uh, antiemetics, but start IV therapy. Dr. Harish, should antiemetics be given to children who are vomiting? It's not the exact core etiology that you are trying to treat by using antiemetic of the vomiting. Moreover, not only that you are increasing the cost of management, but my bigger worry is that if I use antiemetic, they have got lot of toxicity. Some of them puts the child to sedation. And now, child can't take any fluids, child can't take any food, the chances of malnutrition, child, child chances of now going into dehydration are increasing tremendously. Many of the antiemetics mm -hmm. may also have extrapyramidal reactions. And these children, some of them may have fever. I start suspecting many other rare conditions like meningitis and encephalitis. And child may have to be subject to lots of investigation at times which are quite painful and invasive in nature. So to avoid all these issues, we want to condemn. Dr. Patwari, I would like you to tell us something about the rice-based ORS, flavored ORS. They are also very uh, uh, commonly now available in the market. And the practitioners <coughs> also, mothers, of course, do get confused. And practitioners also, some of them are not able to decide whether they should prescribe these or they should just prescribe the standard ORS preparations. Yeah, that's an important question because you have many preparations available these days, uh, rice-based ORS. Uh, the concept of rice-based ORS is basically as a super ORS, which means an ORS which would also, uh, apart from uh, preventing and treating the hydration, would also reduce the volume and duration of diarrhea, volume of stool and duration of diarrhea. And with that thing, you know, uh, many things were tried, uh, many amino acids, many other things were tried. Uh, rice was basically used because uh, it is believed that once it uh, goes into the stomach, it's liberated, it liberates glucose polymers, which are better tolerated than WHO ORS, and that is true also. But the fact remains, when we talk of efficacy, like in cholera, it has been seen that rice-based ORS is having some benefit over the WHO ORS. Otherwise, they are the same, but the price difference is there. So it's logical to believe that for majority of cases of diarrhea, uh, WHO ORS should be preferred. There is no need to use rice-based ORS. Flavored ORS was basically to improve the palatability and you know, and more of a commercial venture. But it has its own uh, drawbacks. It has been seen that many children who are not dehydrated they keep on drinking this flavored ORS, which may sometimes lead to electrolyte imbalance. Therefore, it's recommended that for all practical purposes, for prevention and treatment of dehydration, we must use. WHORS with the uh, logo which has been shown by Dr. Harish to you, and we should not use any ORS preparation which is flavored. There are a lot of misconceptions about whether the animal feed, that is the uh, animal milk, whether it should be diluted or it should be given as such during uh, diarrhea. In, in fact, uh, some people even withhold the intake of milk during uh, the diarrheal episode. The scientists across the world thought many children may have cow's milk intolerance, so they, they may not tolerate the full strength milk. But there is now sufficient evidence to believe that there is no need, in fact, there should not be any dilution of milk. Only thing is while boiling, you can remove the cream. 
Rest of the milk should be given undiluted in all age groups, uh, even children less than three months of age. This is recommended and you should not add any extra water because by doing so, you will uh, really have a negative impact on the nutrition of the child. So this should never be tried and uh, rather you should educate mothers that uh, even if they have some concept because if the grandmother says it at home, your boy should not be taken well. So even if they, she does not opt this option to you, you must discuss and specifically tell her that do not uh, dilute the milk. Uh, Dr. Harish, you spoke on uh, anti-emetics. Uh, would you like to tell the students something about the role of antibiotics during diarrhea? If we see the various types of diarrhea, the basically we divide them into six core etiologies. One was uh, acute watery diarrhea, duration less than 14 days, persistent diarrhea which persisted beyond 14 days, dysentery children who have visible bloody stool, and to this entity fourth term that is cholera has been added. And these are the children which present to us with sudden dramatic dehydration and majority of them are about 3 years of age. As far as dysentery is concerned, it is a definite indication that you have to suspect shigellosis in these children and one has to treat a drug accordingly. The drug currently recommended in the national program is cotramoxazole. In case of failure in 48 hours, you have to change it to nalidixic acid. There are two other indications of use of drugs are that if a child shows prophogyates of giardia or amoeba in the stool, mere presence of cyst in the stool is not an indication of the drugs. Amoeba giving rise to dysentery in children is very rare. However, in a child with dysentery who does not show response to two first line drugs such as cotramoxazole or ampicillin and nalidixic acid, one can give a trial of the drugs. Other indications of drugs such as using some people use uh, lactobacillus, some other anti-motility agents, they have absolutely no role in these cases. They have been shown to be more harmful than serving any benefit in these cases. Uh, there are two antispasmodics which people try and use in these cases, which are mainly used in cases with dysentery. But in these cases, let me forewarn you friend that it gives rise to a complication known as toxic megacolon and which may have very high fatality rates. It may not relieve the pain, but it may put the child's life in jeopardy. So it's better to avoid these drugs than to use the drugs. And the only drug one can use is for suspected cholera or a case who has frank visible blood in the stool. If we see children with acute diarrhea, and if I do stool pH, 80% of the time it will give me acidic pH. What is happening is that some portion of the carbohydrate which is not being absorbed is coming out in the stool. But if we see the scientific rationale in these children, even if I continue the normal lactose intake which the child was earlier getting, they recover. Breast milk also has lactose, but what we are doing is that we are giving it small amount frequently. So in children, the principle of management is that if we use small amount of frequent feeds, that will take care of the problem. One does not need to do pH in children with acute diarrhea. Even if one does it and finds the report, simply ignore it. It has no bearing absolutely on the antibiotics. As far as cases of persistent diarrhea, it is a little different prospect. In these children, one may have to reduce the lactose load. And even in these cases, one does not need to totally withdraw the lactose. In these cases, if the pH shows you that it is acidic, one can tailor made the therapy according to the child's need by initially decreasing the amount of lactose later on, maybe in few instances. Majority of the children, if you decrease the amount of lactose, not by withdrawing the milk completely, but adding some cereals in the milk, that will maintain the palatability, the digestibility and the taste of the food. And the child may take more food, which is a critical importance to me in children with persistent diarrhea. So in this situation, pH may be of some value where you can reduce the lactose load. Even if after reducing the lactose load, if children still have symptoms persisting, the failure rates are if child goes into dehydration even after my reduction of the lactose load or if there are actual weight loss over this, then I have to go to the next mode of therapy where may I, I may completely withdraw lactose. But that is a rare situation. Although diarrhea is a major cause of mortality among children under the age of 5 years, deaths can easily be prevented by 
oral rehydration therapy. ORS is a simple balanced solution which is used for both preventing as well as treating dehydration. Antibiotics have no role to play in watery diarrhea and if given they may even prolong the diarrhea. These are some of the simple measures and if taken promptly they can save the life of number of children.